Uh, Scarta Kate, let's start with you. Um, just describe in detail uh, the basis by which the appeals court uh, decided to reject reinstating this travel ban. What were the reasons? The foundation of the Department of Justice argument has been that this is an executive order issued by the president, and you don't have standing to to review that. Um, they wholeheartedly disagreed, citing a uh, litany of litigation in which there has been judicial review of executive orders um, and, and ruled 3 nothing uh, in favor of the state of Washington. Yeah, you know, the fact that it was unanimous, I think, speaks a lot of volumes as well, Court Gay. But, you know, as we do look ahead to this decision moving to the Supreme Court, what does that issue go to now and who's going to be deciding over it? Well, first, it will, it seems it will go to district court where the original temporary restraining order was issued. Um, there is a deadline of midnight tonight for the state of Washington to uh, apply for a preliminary uh, injunction that would be the next step in permanently banning um, the executive order. Uh, it is another temporary step. Uh, there's uh, a number of deadlines over the next week or so before there will be a hearing in Seattle district court again. Um, uh, Greg, you know, we, we've seen Donald Trump t uh, tweet out, you know, I'll see you in court, the security of our nation is at risk, uh, but yet we're getting headlines from the White House saying that they're still reviewing this, uh, this ruling and, if, and the Justice Department as well. Uh, is Trump just jumping the gun or what do you read into this? Well, he didn't say which court, and Carter Kay is exactly right that there is something that's going to be going on at the district court level as well, a longer term order or, or an argument for a longer term order uh, blocking this ban. But at the same time, uh, there's, there's an excellent chance that the, the administration will go to the Supreme Court and try to get the Supreme Court to do what the Ninth Circuit wouldn't do, which is uh, reinstate the ban while the litigation goes forward. Okay, uh, it, it, so so it, if that's the case, then so I mean, at what point though is there any time frame though by which uh, by, by which the administration has before before they uh, you know before they run out of time to appeal? What's well, the time frame? At the Supreme Court, there's no deadline except that they want to get this ban put back in place. So they're they're feeling a certain sense of urgency. Um, and you know, again, as Carter K mentioned, there there is this, this other litigation going forward in the in the district court. And at least as a formal matter, what's happening at the district court could supersede what the Supreme Court does because. What, what's happening now is what's called a temporary restraining order. It's designed to be really fast, just maybe a couple weeks. Um, and what's happening at the district court is a permanent injunction, excuse me, a preliminary injunction, which is designed to last much longer. And, and generally, when courts do these things, um, the temporary restraining order is, is supposed to sort of die of, its own, uh, die of its own weight once that preliminary injunction gets issued. So it's a lot of legal procedure, but the point is you're going to have fights going on at multiple levels. Uh, so you're going to, you know, you know, keep an eye on, on on a lot of different things. Yeah, you guys are certainly going to be busy, Greg. But, you know, is reality sort of sinking in now for the Trump administration that they are starting to learn the limits of the president's powers? You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a good question. Uh, uh, you know, my guess is it didn't sound like the president had, you know, taken any particular lessons from this. I think he uh, believes this is uh, legal and constitutional. Um, you know, and it's certainly possible the Supreme Court will disagree. Uh, you know, these are the underlying argument that the president has broad power over who gets to come in the country and, and the ability to say um, there's a national security interest. There's not a whole lot of debate about that. It's really more about the implementation and this, the particularities of this order. And one of the keys to this appeals court decision uh, tonight was th they were saying, you know, the shifting interpretations of this executive order. You know, at one point, originally it seemed like it covered green hard car holders and then the White House Counsel's Office said no it doesn't cover green hard card holders right. um, that that was you know one of the reasons that they didn't have a whole lot of confidence about how it would be would be applied you know if the administration went back and reissued an executive order with a little more thought you know, they probably would stand a much better chance in court uh, that's interesting um, Carter Kay, I'm wondering uh, just given Get, on behalf of the people of the state, this on behalf okay. of the people of this state. Uh, this is the Washington Attorney General right now uh, it's the speaking folks you see about here. the case. We'll be introducing shortly. Let's listen in. But also attorneys and professional staff around our office, uh, in different offices spread out across the state, all working in different ways to assist us with this filing. 
these filings, which have been done under intense time constraints, as you might imagine. So I want to emphasize this has been a team effort from this law firm. It is a very proud indeed for this law office. And, uh, and I couldn't be more proud of, of the teamwork that's been involved. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn to Noah, uh, who will, uh, I'll ask him to say a few words and also just to summarize essentially what the Ninth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals did here today, and then we'll have a few words from Colleen. Noah? Thank you, Bob. What, uh, what we argued to the court yesterday was that it's the role of the courts to say what the law is and to serve as a check on the executive branch, and that's what the court has done in this opinion, in this excellent opinion, this well-reasoned, careful, thoughtful opinion that seriously considered all the government's arguments and rejected them. Uh, and, and, and it's important to recognize the real impact that this has already been having on people's lives. We've just been hearing from people all over the state and all over the country about what a difference this has made, and we're so thrilled for that. And I want to thank Attorney General Ferguson for having the bravery to bring this case in the first place and to, uh, and to authorize us to do all, do all this. Uh, thank the governor and the people of the state for all their support in bringing this case. And, and most especially, I want to thank the people across our office, as the attorney general was saying, uh, people in my office like Ann Eagler, Kelly Paradis, uh, 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 Kelly Wood, um, Kristen, Wendy, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm going to forget people, but the bottom line is we have an outstanding office here in the AG's okay, office. Okay, that is people Noah Purcell, the Solicitor day. General of Washington yeah, State. Before him was yeah, Bob Ferguson, uh, who uh, is uh, the Attorney General for yeah, Washington State. Uh, smiles there, uh, smiles there for winning opinion, this is, case the uh, in the Ninth said. Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, Carter Kay, you still there? I am. Okay, so, uh, so, so clearly, you know, a victory for, for, for Washington State. Um, here uh, in uh, in this case, uh, I know you're no travel expert, but what happens here now? Now that this is this has been ruled, what what is actually now going to happen travel-wise in this country? Well, the question that remains to be seen is is exactly how um, the executive order will be enforced, if at all. It likely should not be, and uh, people with green cards, people with visas to enter the United States, students. Uh, people on H-1Bs, uh, refugees, anybody who may have felt as though they were not able to, to access the United States um, should be able to pursue some amount of, um, of entry. Uh, mm. Now, how, how this will be enforced at the borders is a question. Um, there are attorneys at airports uh, all over the United States who are right. still going, uh, spending time making sure that if there are people arriving who they believe could be targeted by the executive order to ensure that they, they do get to um, at least go through the immigration process.